two and a half weeks ago, I was at the funeral of a young girl that was, was killed in Far Bhakti. And the tragedy is that I doubt if there are three people in this, in this room who recall that one year earlier, almost almost in the month, one year before that, another funeral took place in the same settlement. A Jewish youngster named Rami Chaba. And because Jewish lives have become so really cheap, so many deaths, we forget the death of even a child a year ago. And I think that the story of Rami Chaba has to be remembered because there's a tendency, even among Orthodox Jews, to talk about coexistence between Jews and Arabs. I knew the Chaba family well. The Chaba family did not come from uh, below wealthy, wealthy areas. They came from the slums in Tel Aviv, Hatikva. And six years ago, the Chaba family moved from Hatikva, Tel Aviv, to the Shomron, so that their little child, Rami, who at that time was just about two, could live clear air, fresh air. Exactly a year ago, they found Rami Chava's body, a hundred meters from his home. He was eight years old. The person who found the body in the cave told me the Arabs had hammered away at the child's face so that there was no face left. They couldn't identify him by the face. And when I came to the uh, shiva, the home, the mother stood up. You can imagine the feelings of a mother who just lost a child and ate them. The circumstances stood up and shouted at me, Tavtiach me nekama, promise me revenge. That's a Jewish mother, Tavtiach me nekama, promise me revenge. There are two lessons that I want every Jew to learn from this. One, know who the Arabs are. How easy it is to sit in America. Talk about compromising with them. Giving up this and giving up of that. The people who took an eight-year-old child and pounded away at his face and killed him. These are Arabs who, if tomorrow, if they could, would do to us what they did to us 